In the first scene, a burglar named Frank enters a house and searches around. He takes all the jewels and money, but a picture frame catches his eye. He realizes that the owner has a family and flees. Frank returns home in Cold Spring, New York, and places some stuff in his safe. Later, he receives a phone call from his daughter, Madison, who is in Turkmenistan. Later, he goes to the library, where he meets Jennifer, the librarian. Darcy, a robot, interrupts them while they're looking for a book. Jennifer notifies Frank about the library's remodeling and informs him that she will no longer be working there. Later, Frank walks into a store. The kleptomaniac within him can't stop himself from swiping stuff on display. When the clerk notices this and threatens to call the cops, he walks away. Soon after, his son Hunter arrives and drives him home. Frank gets upset since he is too proud to accept help from his son. Hunter takes a robot from the trunk and asks his dad to give it a chance. The robot turns on and greets Frank. The robot enters the house to clean up the mess and prepare food for them to eat. The robot then enters the room with a freshly baked cake and offers Frank his services and company. Hunter threatens to send Frank to a retirement home if he rejects the robot. After that, Hunter drives away, leaving the two on the porch alone. The robot runs all of Frank's errands, from taking out the garbage to grocery shopping, smoothly integrating into his life. The robot serves him grapefruit for breakfast, but Frank asks for cereal. However, the machine doesn't listen to him. Frank leaves to get some cookies while the robot talks about building a garden. At lunchtime, Frank is given a plate of healthy greens, which he hates a lot. Then, they go for a walk in the woods. Later, the two arrive at the library, and Frank instructs the robot to wait outside. A robot approaches him at the counter and asks for Jennifer. The woman is speaking with Jake, the new owner of the library. He has no recollection of the renovation discussion they had yesterday. Frank is angry because all the library books have been taken away. As Frank walks out of the library, he notices a group of children playing with the robot. He suggests that the robot set up a self-destruct sequence so that the kids won't annoy it anymore. They go to the store, where Frank steals another figurine. A new clerk approaches them and offers them lavender soap. She compliments the robot, while the previous woman is hostile to Frank. While the woman threatens to conduct a citizen's arrest, Frank stealthily returns the item. He shows his empty pockets and walks out of the store. Frank complains to his daughter about his new buddy on the way home. During their conversation, Frank learns that the object he attempted to take is in the bag. The robot admits that it obtained the item because it believed Frank had forgotten about it. Back at home, Frank questions the robot about stealing. He goes on to inquire if the robot is programmed to obey the law, to which the robot replies that it is not. With this new understanding, he realizes that having the robot around isn't such bad. But the robot's abrupt reminder of his enema causes him to reconsider. The following day, Frank shows the robot how to open a lock. They talk about Frank's past and his criminal career. Frank was a jewelry thief who lived a life of crime and adventure. The robot eventually succeeds in picking the lock. The two build a bond as Frank understands what they are capable of. The two survey the scene of their first prospective robbery at the library. Jennifer finally meets and introduces the robot to Mr. Darcy. The two discuss how technology has caught up with them since books are now available anywhere on the internet. She invites Frank to the upcoming fundraiser, which he gladly accepts. Hunter contacts Frank later that night while they are cooking, and the old man states that he intends to keep the robot permanently. Frank and the robot prepare to enter the library in the middle of the night. After Frank spray paints the camera, the robot picks the lock. Inside, the robot opens the bookshelves while Frank examines the plans of the structure. After that, they leave the facility and Frank unintentionally leaves his glasses behind. The next morning, Frank plots their next heist. At the fundraiser, Frank stands out amid the crowd next to Jennifer. She tells Frank about the previous night's break-in at the library. The robot is bringing the stolen book all wrapped up in the distance when Frank orders him to stop. Jake and his wife approach them, he compliments Frank, but the protagonist misperceives it. Later that evening, Jake approaches him and asks if he has ever been to prison. Frank remains silent, so Jake inquires whether he uses reading glasses. Frank declines, and the guy asks him to go home. Next, Frank drifts off and focuses on a piece of jewelry a woman is wearing. Frank goes over the photos he took at the party at home. He intends to rob again, but the robot refuses to help him this time. Frank assures him that there is no risk, and the robot agrees. Later, Frank uses his binoculars to observe Jake from a distance and analyze his property. Jennifer pays Frank a visit later that day for dinner, interrupting his planning session. He asks her to return later, and she slams her head against the door. When Frank eventually opens the door, he sees her driving away. Frank returns to methodically finishing their strategy. Soon they are interrupted by a quick tap on the door. 
Madison, his daughter, is finally here to pay him a visit. Madison then turns off the robot by whispering into it. Madison talks about her vacation in Turkmenistan, but Frank isn't paying attention. The next day, he approaches the robot and attempts to awaken it. Madison comes home with a bag of groceries and a box of cereal. Frank claims he prefers the cooking of the robot and requests that she turns it up, but she refuses. Frank is alone in the woods as he studies their victims. He is frustrated since his friend is not present with him. The next morning, Frank goes downstairs to find the living room immaculate. He confronts a harried Madison who claims to have just finished cleaning up. Frank distrusts his daughter and wonders if she is the one who turned on the robot to make it do the cleaning. Frank snaps and hurls a bag of noodles at her, claiming that the robot is not a toy she can turn on and off. Madison admits to using the robot, and he consoles his irritated daughter. Frank begs her to turn on the robot again, stating he needs his companion back. The robot awakens, and Frank murmurs that the robbery will occur later that night. When night falls, Frank begins to describe the strategy. They intend to steal jewelry from Jake's home while he and his wife are away attending an event. Now that it has all the information, the robot wonders how it can execute such a feat, given that its home is sure to have top-notch security systems. According to Frank, someone like him can quickly find a gap in the system's coverage. They tiptoe around the home, looking for a way in. Fortunately, a door with no alarm is conveniently left open. Frank easily locates the safe, and the robot tries every lock combination until it succeeds. Jake and his wife come just as they are about to leave. The two listen in on a disagreement between a couple, but the fight quickly morphs into passionate lovemaking. When Frank returns home, he analyzes their prizes and is astounded to discover exceedingly high-quality jewels. He hides it in his safe, but he's not pleased with the outcome. Frank and Madison relax in the backyard the next day. Jake and the sheriff disturb their relaxing time. Jake accuses Frank of stealing his possessions, but Frank remains deafeningly silent. Meanwhile, the sheriff is shocked by the sight of the notorious robber. Despite being the main suspect, the sheriff believes someone Frank's age is incapable of carrying out such a complicated robbery. Before departing, Jake yells that Frank did it. The sheriff yanks him away, knocking the drink off the table, which the robot immediately catches. Madison says her final goodbyes later that day. Frank presents her with jewels and assures her that it is not from Jake. She drives away, passing a van parked in front of Frank's house. Frank and the robot walk into the house, wondering what the van is doing there. As Frank burns down all the evidence of the robbery, smoke pours from the chimney. The robot tells Frank that the sheriff can use its memory against him and advises him to reformat it. Frank hurriedly places the jewelry in a plastic bag. He tries to cut the piece in half, but his finger is injured. Frank becomes shaky while the robot bandages him. Frank instructs the robot to contact Hunter and inform him that he is dying. Hunter drives nervously to Frank's house. Meanwhile, Frank lies in bed, pretending to be ill. Hunter enters the room, startling his father. Frank puts up a spectacular and emotional performance. He apologizes for not being a good parent and expresses gratitude to Hunter for always looking after him. His son reminisces about their lowly beginnings, but Frank shifts the subject to his actual goal, requesting his son to remove the case containing stolen goods somewhere safe. Hunter hesitates, but his father's sharp cough forces him to accept it. As Hunter drives away, the van blocks him and the police surround him. The sheriff questions him and opens the trunk. The figurines Frank stole from the store are contained within the bag. Jake is still suspicious and demands that the house be searched. Hunter is concerned about his allegedly ailing father as the cops begin their hunt. Frank gives him a slee smile and claims he's helping the cops. Hunter is fed up with his father's games and scolds him for faking dying. He taunts him and the robot, who remains mute throughout the chaos. Jake notices something and advises that the robot's memory be downloaded. Jake begins to strike the robot, but it abruptly enters a self-destruct procedure and begins counting down. Frank flees, but Hunter tells them that the robot is delusory. But as the clock approaches zero, they can't help but flee, only to discover that it's lying. Frank departs in Hunter's car, having picked up the robot in the backyard. Jake stares as Hunter sarcastically commends the cops. In the automobile, the robot considers reformatting its memory. Frank refuses and says they'll just run away together. They halt in front of the library, lockpicking their way inside Jennifer's office. He tells Jennifer about his difficulty, and she understands he stole the book. Frank admits, but the photo frames catch his eye. He recognizes himself in the photograph of Jennifer and her husband. Frank knows Jennifer is his wife, and he kisses her. He and the robot walk out of the library on their way home. Frank's condition worsens in his room. The robot begs him once more to reformat its memory, suggesting that they may then plan their next theft. 
Frank is ultimately persuaded, and he agrees. Frank deactivates the robot by pressing the button on its back. After a few days, Hunter confronts his father, who has been completely absorbed by his memory loss. Frank met the same fate as his pal. He reunites with his family, exchanging smiles and stories at the table. Frank hands Hunter a message as they say their goodbyes. It instructs him to look under the robot's garden for the things he stole.